In this session, we're going to be adding and subtracting masses, including those with mixed units. And we're going to be using a range of different strategies to help us do this. But don't forget, in order to do this, we'll also need to be remembering our previous learning of how to convert mass values between grams and kilograms. Let's open up the textbook and look at what our first problem relating to our adding and subtracting masses is. So let's take a look at our picture before we look at our questions. So what story do you think we can see happening between Zach and Alex? What maths do you think could be involved in this image? Pause the video, have a little think about this and share it with a partner. Then come and join me when we can discover what our focus questions for this lesson is going to be. So let's take a look at question 1a. How much flour do Zach and Alex buy together? Now for this question, I want you to think about what are the key words that can help you identify which operation to use in this question. And then I want you to think carefully about the way that you can show your understanding before you actually apply it and calculate the answer. For question 1b, we're asked, how much more flour does Alex buy than Zach? Again, what strategies can you see that could help work this question out? So now it's time to pause the video and to try and answer both those questions. So question 1a, a, how much flour do Zach and Alex buy together? And question 1b, how much more flour does Alex buy than Zach? So let's pause the video, let's work those out and come and join me when you're ready to look at the strategies we've used. So let's begin with question 1a. How much flour do Zach and Alex buy together? Now with this question, when we're looking at the idea of together, it means we're looking at both amounts at once. And I've represented this as a bar model. So we can see Zach and we can see Alex. Their amounts are both put together. And that gives us the total amount of flour. So that tells us how much flour Zach and Alex will buy together. So now we've worked out what calculation and what operations we need to use. Now let's look at the strategy we can use to solve that. Now for this calculation, what I've decided to do is take the amount that Zach and Alex are both going to buy, 1 kilogram and 500 grams, 2 kilograms and 250 grams, and I've converted those into grams alone using my part whole models. So we can see that our first amount which is Zach, he bought one kilogram of 500 grams, which I've converted into 1,500 grams. And Alex has bought two kilograms and 250 grams, which I've converted into 2,250 grams. I find it easier this way because then I'm working with one set of numbers rather than two separate numbers. And should I need to regroup or exchange at any point, it makes it a lot simpler when I see those digits all in a row rather than being separated by something. And we can now see that is our bar model, which shows us that 1,500 grams and 2,250 grams gives us the total amount of flour that Zach and Alex buy together. The next thing I've done is I've recorded those two amounts as a column addition. So 1,500 plus 2,250. And I'm going to solve this calculation using the expanded column method. So using this method, I'm going to start with the smallest value units, in this case for ones. And I'm going to add those ones together. And here we can see that we've got zero and zero, which when added together gives me zero. Then I'm going to move to the next value on my place value, which is my tens. And I'm going to add those together. So I'm going to add my zero tens and my five tens together, which is going to give me five tens or 50. And I'm going to move along the place value to the next value which is our hundreds and this time I'm going to add my hundreds to give me my five hundreds and my two hundreds to give me seven hundreds and then finally I'm going to be moving to my thousands and I'm going to add my one thousand and my two thousand together to give me three thousand now my final step is going to be adding everything so all those amounts between the blue lines I'm going to add them together so my total of ones my total of tens my total of hundreds and my total of thousands 
so I'm going to have zero ones, five tens, seven hundreds, and three thousands. So 1,500 plus 2,250 gives me a total of 3,750. So for question 1a, we began by representing this problem as a bar model to see that to get our answer, we had to put the amount of flour Zach was buying together with the amount of flour that Alex was buying to see what the total amount was going to be. We then looked at those amounts that they were using and we converted them from kilograms and grams into kilograms. So we didn't have any extra bits of information between our digits. So we could take it from working out mass to just working out addition of numbers. We then used our column method to add those two amounts together. So we added 1,500 grams to 2,250 grams and that gave us the total amount of flour that Zach and Alex are going to buy together which is 3,750 grams. And we could convert that back to kilograms and grams if we chose. So we could convert that to 3 kilograms and 750 grams. So for question 1b we were asked how much more flour does Alex buy than Zach? And here you can see that problem represented as a bar model. Now we know that Alex buys more flour than Zach, and what we're looking for is how much more flour was that. So we can see that we're looking for the difference between the amount that Zach buys and the amount that Alex buys. And then I've replaced their names with the actual values, so we can see that we're looking for the difference between 2,250 2, grams and 1,500 grams. We're looking for what that gap between the yellow bar and the blue bar is. And now I've represented that using my number line. Now I'm looking for the difference between 1 kilogram and 500 grams and 2 kilograms and 250 grams. And I'm going to be counting back with this because I'm going to be seeing how much is the difference between the two. The first jump I'm going to do is from 2 kilograms and 250 grams to 2 kilograms, which means I'm going to be jumping back 250 grams. Next I'm going to be jumping back from 2 kilograms to 1 kilogram 500 grams, which is going to be a jump back of another 500 grams. So altogether the difference between 2 kilograms and 250 grams and 1 kilogram 500 grams is going to be 250 grams and then another 500 grams so it's going to be 750 grams. I could double check that by counting on from 1 kilogram 500 grams to get to 2 kilograms and 250 grams. So now we've looked at those strategies we've used for question 1a, how much flour do Zach and Alex buy all together? Which we worked out as 3 kilograms and 750 grams or 3,750 grams. And for question 1b, how much more flour does Alex buy than Zach, which we worked out as being 750 grams. So now we're ready to move on to the rest of our textbook before we move on to the independent work in our workbooks. And for our first Think Together question, we're showing Alex and Zach waste some more ingredients and we've got to work out the mass of each pair. So in this case, we can see that we're looking for additions and remembering that our strategies that we've used previously we're going to begin by showing that problem using a bar model, converting the units so they're exactly the same units, so kilograms and grams to grams or grams to kilograms and grams depending on your preference. And then we can use, for addition, our column method to add those four digit numbers together. And then for the later subtraction problems, we could be using a number line to find the difference between the two amounts. So good luck with your work today and I look forward to seeing how you get on.